Hi, I'm Catherine from Literacy Volunteers. This is our Civics Questions video, Session 9, focused on the 1800s. So back in 1787, our Constitution was written. Now we've moved forward and we're going to start with the early 1800s and work our way all the way up to some important events and people leading up to 1900. So we'll look at a major event in 1803. We'll talk about the Civil War that happened here in 1861 to 1865. And we'll learn about Susan B. Anthony that was very involved in trying to make our country better from the middle of the 1800s all the way through the early 1900s. As a reminder, originally there were 13 states when we became a new country after we became independent from England. And those states were all over here on the East Coast. We have, over the course of our history, had a lot of westward expansion. We kept getting more territory leading across until we had all of the land from the Atlantic Ocean all the way over to the Pacific Ocean. And a lot of leaders in our country believed that it was our destiny as a country to control all of the land from this coast to from the East Coast to the West Coast. So we're going to focus in today on one of the huge expansions of land that we got in 1803. What territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? Territory, again, is an area of land that is not part of a state. The U.S. got territories when we won them in a war, like for example, we won Guam and Puerto Rico in wars. Sometimes we bought territory from another country, like the U.S. Virgin Islands. And in this question, we see that we also bought territory from France in 1803. Thomas Jefferson was president in 1803. He paid the money to Napoleon, the ruler of France. It was not Jefferson's personal money. It was the United States government money. To Napoleon, the ruler of France. And in exchange, Napoleon sold the United States this huge territory huge, huge, huge territory that basically doubled the size of our country. And that territory was referred to as the Louisiana Territory. It went all this dark part that's darkened in in red in 1803. Over here on this map, you can see in green, that's all the land that was part of the Louisiana Territory. The, and it's also called the Louisiana Purchase, the land that we purchased, that we bought from France. And you'll see the present day state of Louisiana is right down here. So part of the Louisiana Territory from 1803 is now part of the state of Louisiana. But all of these other areas up here, all the rest of the territory has also become states. So Louisiana Territory, we don't currently have a, an area that we call Louisiana Territory. But back in 1803, before all these states were created, it was called the Louisiana Territory. So what territory did the United States buy from France in 1803? Louisiana. Louisiana. It's a confusing spelling. Louisiana. Louisiana. This is a map of the United States in 1860. All the pink areas are the states. So now this is 57 years after the Louisiana Purchase. So a bunch of the states that had been part of the, uh, a part of the territory, the Louisiana Territory has now become states. This land here we got from, um, had originally been part of Mexico. California and Oregon are now states by 1860. These sort of orangey brown areas are still territories. They were not part of any states yet, but they were owned by the United States government. And over here you can see Russia 
was not in any way connected to the United States yet, and neither was Hawaii back in 1860. We need to go back and talk a bit about slavery in the United States. We learned in an earlier video that people from Africa were brought to the United States to work as slaves. Slavery is a system where some people are allowed to legally own other people and force them to work. So just as a farmer might own horses and cows, in, in the system of slavery, that farmer could also own a person who would work for them, okay? Here you see a picture of a slave auction in Richmond, Virginia, many, many, many years ago. So the, this woman here is being sold to one of these men who will buy her to then work for his family. In this system, people were treated horribly. This is a picture of a man who's been whipped on his back and his back has gotten all torn up. Here you see a drawing of a white, either the landowner or an employee of the landowner, the farmer, um, who is whipping this woman if she doesn't work fast enough or do exactly what he wants or um, gather enough of the crop. And this is a picture of a slave, uh, of an enslaved family. Another thing that happened is if, is if the, some people are allowed to own other people, that also meant that their families could be split up. The, the farm owner could sell the children or sell the parents. And so the family could be split up by the, by the person who was the owner of the enslaved people. On this map, we see how many states allowed slavery in the United States back in 1860 and 1861. All of the blue states and the blue territories did not allow slavery. All of the red states and the red territories did allow slavery. By 1861, 19 states did not allow slavery. 15 states did allow slavery. Remember when we learned about Congress and how many representatives each state gets in Congress? In the Senate, there are two senators from each state. In the House of Representatives, states with more people get more representatives. In 1858 to 59, there were 148 representatives in the House of Representatives from states that did not allow slavery. They're called free states. And there were only 90 representatives from states that did allow slavery. They were called slave states because these blue states had more people. They, were, they had a higher population. Also, in 1858, there were more slave, excuse me, more free states than there were slave states. So starting in 1858, the free states now had 34 senators and slave states only had 30 senators. So the slave states now did not have the majority in the House of Representatives, and they did not have the majority in the Senate. They were very worried that now Congress could pass a law making slavery illegal. A group of states declared that they were a new country and they would not be part of the United States anymore. This group of slave states, states where slavery was allowed in the South, they now called themselves a whole new country, and that country was called the Confederate States of America, and it had a different flag than the United States flag. So this was the United States, all the blue territory, blue states, and the gray territories are part of the United States of America, and you recognize our flag. This new country, declared in 1860, 1861, is called the Confederate States of America, 
and they had their own flag. The Civil War then is the war that's fought between the North, the United States of America, and the South, the Confederate States of America, over whether the South could leave, whether those states could leave and form a separate country where they would allow slavery. So here you see a battle between the Confederate States of America troops with their flags and the United States of America troops from the North with their flags. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s, the Civil War. This is the biggest war fought by the United States in the 1800s was the name of the war between the North and the South, between the United States of America and the Confederate States of America. That war between two parts of the country was called the Civil War. Name one war fought by the United States in the 1800s. The Civil War. Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. Also, the Civil War. Name the U.S. war between the North and the South. The Civil War. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. The biggest problem that led to the Civil War was slavery. That some of the states wanted to continue to have slavery be legal, and many states thought that we should not have slavery in our country. That it went against our basic documents and views about freedom and liberty. Name one problem that led to the Civil War. Slavery. Abraham Lincoln was president of the United States during the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln declared that the enslaved people in the South were free. He said, no one in those states has to be a slave anymore. So no more slavery in the southern states. And the proclamation is a formal document, a formal announcement. It was called the Emancipation Proclamation. Emancipation is another word for freedom or to set free. And proclamation is a, is a formal announcement. So really the Emancipation Proclamation means a freedom announcement. What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? Freed the slaves. What was one important thing that Abraham Lincoln did? Freed the slaves. What did the Emancipation Proclamation do? Freed the slaves. What did the Emancipation Proclamation do? Freed the slaves. The North won the Civil War. So the starting in 1865, we were back to being one country again. All the pink, pink states are states in the United States. And these territories were still territories. Over time, they would form into new states. Lincoln was killed after the war, just after the war ended. A group of people who were angry that the North won got together and agreed that one of them would go and shoot Abraham Lincoln. We talked some in an earlier video about amendments that increased people's right to vote. So originally, at the time of the U.S. Constitution, white men could vote. After the Civil War, there was an amendment to the Constitution in 1870 
the 15th Amendment that said the right to vote shall not be denied based on race or color. So people who had been slaves could no longer be prevented from voting because of the color of their skin, because of their race, because they were black. In 1920, so another, uh, let's think, 50 years, 55 years after the end of the Civil War, the 19th Amendment was passed saying that women have the right to vote. Susan B. Anthony is a famous American who worked to end slavery and to get women the right to vote. What did Susan B. Anthony do? She worked for women's rights. Here's all of the questions that we've covered today. If you're using the textbook that we use at Literacy Volunteers, you can look at Chapter 5 to review what we learned today. We'll see you next time.